Hamish and Andy. And uh, uh, coming into Easter this morning, I was thinking about a phenomenon that happened in my household when we were growing up. The next door neighbours, um, their uncle or someone worked for Haig's Chocolates, oh. right? And as He's a- Willy Wonka. Almost. Effectively, yeah. if you're a kid, you're like, this guy's got access to Norman an, Haig. an unprecedented amount of access to, to chocolate. Yeah. So it was a bit of a standard gift. He's the king. That we, he's the king. He's the king of chocolate. It was a standard gift that we would get a giant box, like I'm talking almost two shoe boxes big. Whoa. Right. Oh, actually, no, that's massive. Of what? <laughs> of scorched almonds. Jeez. I'm going to downgrade it. I'm just saying that because I was a child and it yeah. felt like a big box. Yeah. I think it was probably about think- the size of a shoe box. <laughs> okay. yeah. It was one scorched almond. <laughs> <laughs> it was a matchbox with a scorched almond. Sorry, in. I was thinking of, from the perspective of an ant. Yeah, no, that's wrong. No, it was about it was about the size of a shoe box. And there's a lot of scorched almonds. Though. Wow. Heaps, heaps because they had this hookup yeah. at Hayes. I think it was the biggest legal size yeah. box you could get. On the street. Whispers on the black market, you could get bigger boxes, but legally, uh, for, non, for non-commercial purposes, this is the biggest box you could get. Street value, probably nudging 90 bucks. Wow. Uncut. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> of course, you could cut it with gum nuts yeah. <laughs> and sell it for upwards of $200, <laughs> yeah. but you would have some unhappy users. Yeah. yeah. It was massive, right? Mm-hmm. And because there were so many in there, there's no way as a parent you can police that sort of... No. If it was left in the pantry, yeah. I mean, it'd just be a free-for-all. Yeah. So in an effort to ration the scorched almonds out over the next few weeks between my brother, my sister and myself, my parents would immediately hide the scorched almonds and they would remain hidden for about nine minutes uh-huh. uh, until my brother and I would f- had found them, found uh-huh. the stash. Uh-huh. And there's so usually about ten good hiding spots yep. mum and dad had. Uh-huh. Like, you know, well, I remember one year it was in the luggage. Well, that's very good. Like, they put it in their blue suitcase in uh-huh. their wardrobe. Yep. And we'd go, well, easy, easy. Wow. Go, come on, guys, you're not trying. One year dad put it in the attic, put him in the attic. Yeah. We are on to that. We could hear him r- ruffling around in the roof. I know where he's put the, the, the stuff. <laughs> right, because yeah. they knew what they are up against because yeah. we loved these Scorch almonds. Once we knew where they were, though, we faced a bit of a dilemma. If we stole too many too quickly, it would be clear to the parental forces mm. That the stash had been discovered and yeah. that there were raiders in the midst. So the trick was to steal slowly and calmly. Yeah. Otherwise, they'd be rehidden. Good call. Or confiscated entirely. To make it look like. To make, to, to, to make Just it look so like. So as not to notice. Everything's normal. And it's an interesting. I was thinking about it this morning that when, you, when you're nicking food or nicking drinks or stealing something from someone gradually. Yeah. There is, a, there is a detectability threshold. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. There's a stealing threshold you pass where after that, like eventually there would come a point like two weeks after Easter, my brother and I'd be standing there looking at three almonds rolling around in the bottom of the box <laughs> going, we've eaten 400, I think they're going to know. <laughs> well, <laughs> On Sunday was- night, if mum and dad have people around for dinner and yeah. they go, well, we'll go and get some scorched almonds, yeah. we're dead. They're going to know. What was the stealing threshold, do you think, for the scorched One year, I, I, because I can't really stop with the food, just no. as a little kid, yeah. I smashed through the stealing threshold so badly. Yeah. In a moment of panic, <laughs> I stole the entire box, hoping that oh, mum really? and dad would think they didn't hide it there after all and they just <laughs> lost the box. <laughs> I reckon it got down to this. There, was, there were probably in there about four almonds deep yeah. right, in this big box. We probably could steal. We would steal up until there was just one layer of uh, Scottish almonds yeah, left. Yeah. Anything more than that, if you could start to see the paper underneath. Wax paper. Rats would be smelt. Yeah. And so if we could steal down to that one layer, our security layer, would still kind of get away with it. 131060, what is the stealing threshold? Uh, yeah. Tell us the item. This? Depending- yeah, what's the food? Mm. And how much can you reckon you can steal and get away with? Because I um, used to steal my mum's a tort. It was a cake she made only if she had people around. So, you know, once every six months mm. you get access oh, to wow. a tort. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she didn't have people around often. <laughs> She's anyway. Really, that's a special friend. Yeah. And um, I knew it was a cake, right? So circular. Yeah. And they, they'd they always make two, mm-hmm. right? And then generally it was the first one would be done by the dinner party yeah. and then the second one would have maybe a slice out of. Great. My brother and I would cut away a slice yeah. of our own and I knew one day that I went past a 45-degree angle 
for the cake. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe she had like 10 degrees yeah, yeah. out of it. You went. You I went, went out of. Uh, well, yeah. you know what I think? In a as, circular... soon as, as soon as the angle became obtuse. You're in trouble. N- yeah. You're not past acute. the stealing I threshold. I should have had an acute angled cake. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you year four geometry. <laughs> Here's the, the thing is, I reckon when you're stealing circular food, yeah. my, I have the 10 minute rule. Awesome. If you imagine it's a clock face, mm-hmm. don't wrap it up, Jack, because this is important <laughs> stuff. If you imagine a clock face, yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah, you can call. steal ten, 10 minutes. minutes. Yeah, yeah, or cut a whole thing off the bottom, or one big disc. <laughs> <laughs> Adam on thirteen ten sixty, you're a chef, mate. What's the what? uh, what's the stealing threshold for which food? Uh, well, I used to work in this Italian restaurant, and we used to get prosciutto and smoked salmon, so expensive cuts of meat. Yeah. When you were slicing the prosciutto, um, which was about four hundred dollars for a leg of prosciutto, oh, you used to just pick, pick off as much as you want. Or if it was in its containers already sliced, same as you guys, as soon as you get to the bottom, that was the time to stop. Yeah. Also, you'd probably have to shave more, which you never wanted to do because it was a pain in the ass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. But as long For as... For the ham as well. That's what, Visually, if yeah. you're seeing the bottom of a plate or a container... You're in trouble. You're in trouble. Yeah. If you can keep it covered, mm-hmm. keep those bottoms covered. <laughs> get away with murder. Mark, for a cake, what's the stealing threshold? Well, it depends on the size of the plate. So yeah. my, my little tactic is to steal a cake and then to put the remainder onto a smaller plate so it looks like the cake's bigger. Like sometimes yeah. it looks like the cake's grown. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's so fantastic, Mark. Mark, I've heard of someone, this just reminded me of a story I've heard of, I've heard of someone slicing up the cake into all its slices, right? Yeah. And then when the girlfriend came in and said, what have you done to the cake? Say, saying, I've pre-sliced it. But it takes it out of the circular formation, and now it's just eight slices of cake. Again. Again, you can, you can make off with one or two of those slices, but who's ever pre-sliced a cake? Peter, yours is to do with soft drink. Yes, it is. Um, you twist the lid just enough so that you don't break the seal, but you create enough room to squeeze the bottle. You can squeeze as much soft drink out of the bottle as you want. Yeah and then just retighten the lid so you can claim that the bottle's never been opened. Oh, that's yeah. good, Pete. <laughs> you kids like heading it. to the supermarket this afternoon <laughs> to try that one. <laughs> Peter, well done. Uh, Sally, your sister does, does something that, uh, that's on the stealing threshold, so she just goes undetected. Yes, very well, actually. Mm. With um, bread rolls, she'll put her finger into it and get all the dough out, and then when you go to open the roll, obviously it's empty. She's hollow rolled you. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, she's literally rolled you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've been rolled. <laughs> Shelly, again, brilliant. I very mean, good. I don't know why I didn't yeah. clap earlier. But very good. Very good. It's like termiting. So yeah. from the outside, you're like, oh, everything seems everything, to be yeah. weighing on us so good. Yes. <laughs> Roll termites. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Hamish and Andy.